everyone, I'm Kevin, otherwise known as Forum VX257, here to bring you another 1980s G.I. Joe toy review. And today I'll be taking a look at a fan favorite, the Cobra Android Trooper, the 1986 Bats. Now, when the toy was first issued in 1986, uh, the Bats title, or rather his name, had an S on the end of it. Rather a lot like the Cobra Infantry Trooper, the Vipers, which was also issued in 1986. The following year, they made that singular, just B-A-T. Now, I do refer to the singular figure as Bats sometimes, and sometimes Bat, so you'll have to forgive me on that one. Interestingly enough, on the front of the card and on the back, it doesn't actually mention what the B in bats means. It's often re just referred to as a Cobra Android Trooper, which obviously doesn't account for the B in the bats. When it first makes its appearance in the Marvel comic book run in issue 44, again, it's not referred to as a bats or anything with the B in it. When it makes its next appearance in issue 53, basically at the end of the, uh, basically at the end of the year, they finally get around to calling this Battle Android Trooper. It makes its first appearance in the cartoons in the 1986 season opener in the five-parter Arise Serpentor Arise in the very first part. Again, there it's called Battle Android Trooper as well. Interestingly enough, in the cartoon, despite the fact that the, um, the head here is kind of shown all in one color. The toy actually does have a black head, but with a silver silver visor or face. But in the cartoon, that visor face part is red. It's possible that they changed the color because there were other characters, such as the Vipers again, as well as the Motor Vipers and Strato Vipers, which had uh, silver uh, face masks. So I suppose it could have been a bit difficult to distinguish between uh, human characters and robot characters. Interestingly enough, there has been a rumor that because of the card art, and you can see it sort of in the elbows, it looks like a human elbow. In other words, it looks like something that Cobra, the or Cobra organization, might have taken some uh, fallen soldiers and robocop them into a cyborg. However, after a talk with lead designer Ron Rudat, it's quite clear that that's basically just an art mistake and these were always meant to be purely non-organic robots. Out of all the 1986 figures which I've just picked up, the Bats has impressed me the most with its design and engineering. The color scheme and even the uh, swoopy stylized head sculpt, which kind of reminds me of a sort of an Art Deco take on what a robot would look like, or maybe even a 1930s Max Fleischer cartoon robot head. Of course, one of the main things about the bats is that crazy lenticular sticker right in the chest, which of course gives the illusion of depth. Now I'm not sure why you'd want exposed robot guts right in the center of your uh, combat robot, hey, it couldn't have been cheap or even easy to have made this for a figure which basically retail for the same price as all the other figures did. And of course, the Bats also has an extra point of articulation due to its gimmick. Of course, it now has basically a wrist swivel added to it because the wrist pops off along with the hand and you can replace it with a torch a laser or a gripper arm 
personally, I really like the gripper arm, as that is very evocative of a robot, but also kind of menacing at the same time. Oddly enough, it, uh, it doesn't really mention on the card contents list which one of these is the torch and which one of these is the laser, but of course the artwork for the card has this as being the torch or flamethrower, so by process of elimination this must be the laser. I just wish they would have been a little more clear on that. And of course, all three can be stored in the storage backpack with these little pegs, which are basically the same thing as the peg which is on the end of the arm. One thing to note about the figure is the yellow used for the uh, highlights here are really thick on this particular figure, making it almost orange. The lighter that they are, the more yellow it appears. And most of the figures were, in fact, had a, a much lighter paint to paint application. And so they wind, wind up looking a bit more yellow, which is why the orange ones are a little harder to get uh, rubbed off. And the yellow ones, which unfortunately are the more standard, usually have a bit of chipping here and there at the edges. I would say the bats only have two major problems to look out for. One of which is pretty obvious, and one of which was not so obvious. In fact, the not so obvious thing is that the storage backpack is made of a very brittle hard plastic, so the pegs are fairly easy to crack off, and that's really not easy to see in photographs. If you're looking for one on the aftermarket, you might want to ask your seller to make sure that all three pegs are still intact. The other problem is more obvious because the sticker is fairly uh, easy to come off over time. It's just glued on there and this is what one <laughs> normally looks like on the aftermarket because as you can see it's very very slick and very flat here so over time the hardened glue doesn't really have anything to grip onto and simply pops off and is very easily lost. I would actually have to say that one missed opportunity the designers had was not to include a pop-off uh, left arm. So you don't have the opportunity to have um, weapons in both arms. It's just the one. Well, that's all the time I have right now, 
please check out my Facebook page for more information and behind the scenes photos for these reviews. Thank you for watching this video and stay tuned for next time to see another 1980s G.I. Joe tour review. See you then.